Welcome poetry students. The purpose of this video is to welcome you to the course, give you a very, very tiny introduction to our class, and I'm going to show you how to read a poem. Um, this is a four week course. You're going to be reading 50 poems, writing about them a little bit, um, and, but all that's going to be explained in your modules online. Uh, what, what I would like you to learn to do this summer is to uh, kind of personalize some of these poems and hopefully um, maybe try your hand at writing some of your own poetry, which we will have an opportunity to do in this class. Um, so on the how to read a poem, um, it's, it, it, poetry was written, poetry is written to be read aloud. It, it should be a, almost a, a whole body experience. And so if you are simply um, picking up for your 50 poems that you're going to be reading this summer, picking up your book and um, turning to the page and just reading the words on the page, you're not going to get much out of this class. I would like you to find a quiet spot in your house where you can um, get personal with your book and read your poems out loud, hopefully several times, many times each, in fact, so that you can um, listen to the sound of the words the way the author intended them. Some of the poems in our book are extremely um, rich uh, in an auditory way. They have a lot of um, assonance and alliteration and the, some of the rhymes are wonderful and just the very the very sound of the words together can be beautiful. Um, and then for some poems it's um, you get a lot more out of, of hearing the tone of the words um, like the one that I'm going to read for you here in a minute. Um, there's just something about the reading aloud of a poem that makes it um, come to life that makes it real and uh, a much more a sensory experience. So uh, the poem that I've chosen to read for you today is called Soliloquy of the Spanish Cloister by Robert Browning. It's on page 73 in your book. The first thing that I do when I approach a new poem is I look up something about the author. We have that uh, that available to us now that we didn't have years ago. Uh, we kind of were on our own when it came to reading poetry if we weren't sitting in a library. But now with Google, um, it's so easy to get a general background of a poem if, if it's a published poem. Uh, most of them are on the internet. So that's what I would do. It would be look up the poet and then uh, find out when the poem was written. In our book, the publication date comes right after the poem. Um, so if you flip the page, just page 74 in, in your book, um, It'll show you that this poem was published in 1842. I'm going to be reading Soliloquy of the Spanish Cloister by Robert Browning. A little bit of background on this poem. It is um, written from the perspective of a monk, and he's speaking in his head to another monk that he hates. And the monk that he hates, his, his fellow monk, they're, they're sitting at dinner. Um, this other monk is a gardener, and he has been sabotaging um, his monk, his fellow monk's uh, gardening efforts on the sly because he he so despises his fellow monk. So. Soliloquy of the Spanish Cloister by Robert Browning. Grr, there go my heart's abhorrence. Water your damned flower pots. Do if hate killed men, Brother Lawrence. God's blood would not mine kill you. What? Your myrtle bush wants trimming? Oh, that rose has pot prior claims. Needs its leaden base filled to brimming? Hell dry you up in its flames. At the meal we sit together. Salve TB. I must hear. Wise talk of the kind of weather, sort of season, time of year. Not a plenteous cork crop. Scarcely dare we hope all cause. I doubt. What's the Latin name for parsley? <sighs> What's the Greek's name for swine snout? <sighs> we'll have our platter burnished, laid with care on our own shelf. With a fire new spoon we're furnished, and a goblet for ourself. Rinsed like something sacrificial, air to spit to touch our chaps. Marked with L for our initial. <laughs> there, 
is Lily Snaps. Saint Forsooth. While Brown Dolores squats outside the convent bank with Sam Chicha telling stories, steeping tresses in the tank, blue-black, lustrous, thick like corsairs. Can't I see his dead eye glow, bright as to a Barbary corsairs? That is, if he'd let it show. When he finishes refection, knife, knife and fork, he never lays crosswise to my recollection, as I do in Jesus praise. I, the Trinity illustrate, drinking watered orange pulp in three sips, the Aryan frustrate, while he drains his at one gulp. Oh, those melons, if he's able, we're to have a feast. So nice. One goes to the abbot's table, all of us eager to get a slice. How go on your flowers? None double. Not one fruit sort can you spy? Strange. And I, too, at such trouble, keep them close-nipped on the sly. There's a great text in Galatians. Once you trip on it, entails 29 distinct damnations. One sure if another fails. If I trip him just to die, and sure of heaven as sure can be, spin him around and send, send him flying off to hell, am I she? Or my scrofulous French novel on gray paper with blunt type. Simply glance at it. You grovel hand and foot, and Belial's gripe. If I double down its pages at the woeful 16th print, when he gathers his green gauges, opus C and slipped in. Oh, there's Satan. One might venture pledge one soul to him, yet leaves such a flaw in the indenture as he'd miss it till past retrieve, blasted lay that rose acacia. We're so proud of. Hi, Zai, Hine, there's Vespers. Plena gracia, Ave. There go, Grr, you swine. Thank you.